1797, the Treaty of Tripoli was installed that basically said that in no way, in no sense, I should say, in no sense is the United States founded on the Christian religion. And all those people that are on Mount Rushmore and some others uh, were totally on board with it. Yeah. Why would that be? Well, because they all came from England. They were all elitists. They were all from secret societies. Yes, of course, many people know they were from the Freemasonries, but that's how we got all these secret societies here in America. They brought them. Um, so the original founders of America, the ones that made the covenant with God, which let's be clear, the Constitution hasn't protected us, God has. And it's because of that covenant that the Mayflower pilgrims made as soon as they got to Plymouth. And the first line of it, it starts out with God, under God. In fact, the Mayflower um, pilgrims, I don't, it doesn't seem that they were all that, they didn't care what the king did. They just wanted their number one thing. It wasn't about what uh, having all this free, it wasn't about all the things, you know. It was about worshiping Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, unlike the revolutionary founders, which are on Mount Rushmore, which most people think that those are our founders, but they're not. The Mayflower Pilgrims are, and yet there's a big, big difference between both. The revolutionary ones, the ones that are on Mount Rushmore, are elitists. And your Mayflower Compact, the ones that did the Mayflower Compact when they got to Plymouth, those people were you and I. They were your average, hardworking people. The tribulation and suffering they went through just to get to a place where they could worship Jesus Christ, thats that was their number one. They didn't care if they died getting to that place. So there's a big difference between those two. Because on the one hand, these elitists, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Paine, they all believed in enlightenment. Man will enlighten man, man, men. We will have think tanks and groups and societies, and we will only allow people of our intellectual level to join, and then we will be able to fix the morals and problems in society. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Mayflower Pilgrims who are just hardworking and put their faith above everything else. Very big difference. And who's on Mount Rushmore? The elitists, of course, of course. So who does the Constitution really serve? Who, who Really, if you, if you sit back and think about it and try, you know, you have to knock yourself out of that brainwashing a little bit, but does the Constitution really serve the people like that were on the Mayflower, like Benjamin Franklin didn't come on the Mayflower. He, he, he came in a very luxurious way because he was an elitist. But the people on the Mayflower, they were like crammed in that ship. Many died and disease illness all the way here. Yeah. They, they suffered a, a true tribulation just getting here. And then even, um, you know, that went that following winter. They made peace with the Indians so they could have harmony. Uh, Rush Limbaugh made it a point every year, the week of Thanksgiving, to always tell this, the full story of the pilgrims. And it, it was, it's because you forget all about it. Because people think that, that, yeah, they were the first founders, but they, look, we, we put, we put Thomas Jeff, or George Washington on Mount Rushmore. Why? Because he fought a war? It's no different than it is now. So who does the Constitution serve? We're told that it serves us. We're told that we're the boss. But that's clearly not true, right? We all see that. That's not true. We are not. The, everything that the elitists have said have been lies. What a surprise. Um, 
they wrote the Constitution and just drilled into us that this is what the founders did for you so that you can have these rights. Have those rights worked out for you? No, don't have free speech. Because the moment people spoke up, you realized, oh, no, we never had it. We just believed them all this time, so we never really said anything. But then when people started speaking up, that's when we found out that that Constitution means very little. That Constitution works more for the um, uh, followers of Baal than it does the followers of Jesus Christ. And that would make sense because of the Treaty of Tripoli, because those elitists that we were told are, are our founding fathers and how great they are, they said we weren't founded under a Christian religion. Well, that's not true. That's not true. We were founded under the Judeo-Christian values. It would have been nice to have known what, because a couple of the people that came off the Mayflower went on to be governors, but it would have been Nice to know what their vision, besides the fact that their, their, their number one was Jesus Christ, that was the Son of God. And I, as I said, I believe they were filled with the Holy Spirit because nobody would go through that tract of what they had to go through to get here um, and risk all that unless they weren't filled with faith that was um, carrying them along. And they, that the Mayflower Compact is where the covenant with God is written. So that's what protects this. That's what's protected this country is that covenant that the Mayflower pilgrims made in that compact. Everything the revolution, uh, everything the ones on Mount Rushmore did, yeah, we've just been drilled down our throat that these are the, the great people. Mm -hmm. But all from secret societies that then just brought more secret societies. And, you know, think tanks were even going on back then because Benjamin Franklin had um, a group called Junto, Junto Society or, Jun yeah, Junto Society. I don't know if it was secret, but it was intellectuals getting together and talking about morals and values and print and, and how we best shape society because these were men that believed they thought they could think higher than God, which is the all-seeing eye. They saw themselves as the all-seeing eye. Yeah. Only um, the intellectuals will be allowed in that group think tank. And look at what the think tanks, look at what the intellectuals, look at what the lawyers, the professors, look at what they've done to the country. Yeah. They've uh, uh, a total disgrace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Constitution was written for the revolutionary founders. It wasn't written for the American people. They just told you that it was for you and I. But most of it wouldn't have had to been written if it was really for you and I, because all it did was place regulations, place rules and laws. And I'm not saying you should just have a free for all and no laws, but the way they've it, it's been chiseled down and every little detail. And, and then when you go to fight it or, or you think you're standing on your constitutional rights, well, no, you're not. Come to find out, your, 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 your revolutionary founders didn't even believe in Jesus. So you think they're going to care about you American people? No, they're all the while they're telling you that you have this free country. Uh, they're, they have all their secret societies. They're just building more and more of here in America through the universities. More and more intellectuals. Yep. Very things wrong with this country. <laughs> One of the very things. So, yeah. I think it would be nice. I think that what Jesus wanted us to do was build a government, but use the biblical lens to build it. And a bunch of people in America would never go for that, right? Because they hate the Bible. But ultimately, I think that's what Jesus wanted us to do was see the government through a biblical lens and build it that way. And don't use elitists.